Hey guys, it's March 17th and I did not update the FTMO challenge account yesterday so I'm going to start the video with just a quick recap of the trades that were yesterday and the day before. Uh, then I'll do a market scan and show the trades that were taken today at the end and where the account's sitting. So right now, um, you know, the account has been around break even and I just want to say to everyone, you know, that's completely normal. So when you are only a few days into following a system and you still haven't seen results, you know, you're still hovering around break even, maybe a little in profit, maybe a little behind. Um, that's completely fine. And that's just totally normal with any system, especially a trend following strategy where you need the market to present you good trends to be able to actually make consistent profits from the market. In ranging periods, you're going to be pretty stale. It's going to be just repeating your system over and over again until you actually are able to give your strategy the opportunity to be in on those trends. So making sure that you keep trading your system so that you are actually getting that opportunity when the trends start to get in on them. So just uh, make sure that you're not getting discouraged if whatever your trading system is isn't producing results right away. That's totally normal. You should go through stale periods for multiple days, um, even weeks, depending on what your system is. Now, so I'm trying to make this challenge where I'm just showing discipline and consistency and you know not changing the rules just because it's not working right away so i'm going to give it the full chance that it deserves meaning the full 30 days i'm going to continue trading the exact strategy over and over and over and over again um, relentlessly so you just need to keep doing your system keep following it don't go suddenly risk a ton of money because you feel like you're not profiting enough don't change the rules because you think there's something wrong with your system um, obviously this system that's being traded isn't optimized so it's not ideal at all but the it's still like the concept is there of just sticking to a system over and over again and repeating it so that's the whole purpose of doing this challenge with a not optimized strategy is to just show the concept of discipline consistency and try and get this across to people who may have might have trouble when they're going through a stale period in their trading um, even if they just spent, you know, months optimizing a system and then they go through a stale period right, right away when they start trading the system, it's totally normal. You should go through stale periods. That's just how all trading systems work. You can't always have amazing opportunities in the market and make tons of profits. Some months you're going to have huge gains. Some months it's going to be slow. You might be closer to break even at the end of a month. So just um, keep that in mind and realize that that is just the truth of trading and that you're not going to be consistently long term profitable any other way. Um, it's all about the consistency and just keeping at it. So um, yeah, lower the expectations. If you have been feeling like you should be bringing in huge profits on a, every single day, um, you know, that's just not the case. And even FTMO recognizes that um, that 10% in one month is way too much because as long as you make any profit at all in that first, in that month challenge, they're going to let you retake it as long as you stick to the risk management parameters because that is what is important ultimately is not as long as you're not taking huge hits on the account you're keeping that account around break even you know you you're doing a good job so just uh make sure that you don't let yourself kind of slip into this mindset of you're supposed to be making a ton of money right away um with your trading system okay it's just not how it is okay and i think any any person who's been trading for a good number of years would tell you the exact same thing. So just uh, understand that. But anyway, let's get into just the recaps from yesterday, do a market scan, go over the trades from for today. Um, it's not not much has really changed on the account. So it's not all that exciting. But you know, you guys will see the process over the whole month. Um, and it might be boring because of how consistent and just repetitive it is. But you know, that's how trading works. So let's get into it. Okay, so in a short position on the pound against the Swiss franc, you can see we got lower high on the price, but higher high on the RSI, got the cross down here. So entered on this candle, and essentially the stop is super close, um, just following the rules. Um, so hopefully it doesn't get stopped out and then go in my favor, but we'll see what happens. 
uh, typically what I would actually be aiming to do with this would be a stop loss that's up above this swing high here and then still targeting two times the risk so it would be a more reasonable profit target for a continuation down and a much safer stop loss so this one could get tipped out and you know spreads can widen and cause all sorts of uh, problems so hopefully this one that doesn't happen but we'll see all right quick update uh the euro against the canadian dollar trade just hit its profit target so this one was a good one and we'll see how the other ones play out um, obviously this one is at high risk with how tight the stop loss placement is so um, i'm not too optimistic about this one but we will see all right quick update the uh, pound swiss franc trade just got stopped out so that one is a loss. All right, so just got another entry on pound Swiss franc, and it's just another cross down right after getting stopped out on that last position. So we'll see if this one ends up working out. All right, so the pound Swiss franc trade got stopped out. Um, it was just about a, a few pips or a couple pips away from hitting the profit target, but then it reversed, so took the loss on that one. And then this one on Australian dollar against the Japanese yen is uh, just been going sideways for quite some time now. Um, so we'll see how that plays out. The account's down by about 0.85%. So um, not much has really changed. Um, you know, it's just how trading works. You know, you're going to go through periods where you're just trying to capture a good trend. And, you know, you just got to keep trucking until you actually do capture a good trend and manage your risk accordingly. All right, guys, time for a market scan. It's March 17th, uh, just after 7 a.m., so let's go through the pairs. So starting on Euro dollar, 30-minute time frame, we can see a pullback, but this is going to have to come up a bit higher if we want to see hidden divergence compared to this pullback here. So probably worth taking a look at if it comes up here a bit. Anyway, let's get to the watch list here and take a look at some others. Looks like this one is also kind of teetering on the, you know, just a little bit up before it gets some hidden divergence. But the thing here is now it's above the 200, so we can't actually use this one. Really nothing there. Looks like this one has hidden divergence. Yeah, okay. So lower high, hidden divergence, very clear. Oh, I'm not allowed to zoom out to look at the main trend, okay. So I just have to go based off of the 200 EMA. Okay, so already got across down and now it's at a better point. So if we, I'm gonna wait for another cross down and then I can get in, okay. So definitely interested in this one. This was the short from the other day. Let's take a look at it now. Looks like we got hidden evidence. So actually, yeah, another cross down on this and that would be valid. Lower high, higher high on RSI compared to this pullback here. Yeah, so this one's valid for a short setup. It's above, it's above, um, looks like this one, not quite there with the hidden divergence, but it looks like it might be getting there. It's no pullback, it's above the 200, looks like we got a pullback here. And not quite there on the hidden divergence. Um, yeah, no, no hidden divergence. Yeah, no pullback. No pullback. All right, pull back in a downtrend. 
Definitely got hidden divergence here, making a really high peak on the RSI, but much lower high for comparing it to this pullback. So we might have to zoom out. Yeah, I got to use a 30 minute time frame. So yeah, I just don't think I can really use this setup because I can't really compare it to this pullback. It's just a different, different thing. So we'll just stop out. And nothing there. So if we kind of missed an entry, um, this is really choppy looking. Let's, oh, I can't zoom out. Mm. Well, yeah, I don't know about this one, but if we get a, you know, there we do get hidden divergence. It's a lower high are high on the RSI. So we get across down, I, I gotta take this one because we do have hidden divergence. See, higher than over here. Can't take anything there. No pull back there, uh, no pull back there, no pull back, uh, no pull back there. Yeah, no hidden divergence. Nothing. All right, so that's all the uh, pairs. I'll update you guys. Um, obviously, there were a few that were looking pretty good. All right, guys, entered another short position here on Euro against the Swiss franc. Uh, as you can see, we got hidden divergence. If we compare this pullback's high of the RSI to this pullback's high of the RSI, much lower high on price, but higher high on the RSI. And just got in on this cross down here. So you can see my entry over here, stop loss just above the swing high here and targeting two times the risk. So we will see how this plays out. All right, as you can see, the Australian dollar Japanese yen trade just hit its profit target in one foul swoop right before getting stopped out down here. So that was a lucky one, just shot right on up there. So. On to the next setup. This one is currently just kind of chopping around the euro against Swiss franc. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, this one's still just kind of going sideways, so we'll see how this one plays out in a short on this. All right, final update for March 17th. You can see the account balance is at 9,996, so down by $3.81. So yeah, pretty much break even at the moment, which is great because we're managing risk nicely. Even though a lot of losses have been taken, um, doing a good job at keeping the account from dropping by too much. So that's exactly what we want um, when the markets aren't providing the opportunities that we're looking for. So just uh, be consistent, guys. Be disciplined. Make sure you keep sticking to your rules. And you know, um, if you have a proven system, if you just keep trading it, you're going to be profitable in the long run. So you got to give it the chance to actually work and give you those profitable trades. It's okay to be stale or go through periods where you know you're gonna stay around break even, not making money for a bit. So I'm just gonna keep trading the system. It's gonna be boring for you guys, but you're gonna see how actually trading is done so you know it's not it's not fun <laughs> if it's fun you're probably gambling anyway uh let's check in back tomorrow and uh see what we're looking at